Okay, are we ready to make a start? Thank you. Welcome everyone to the shareholder board today. Um, the meeting will be webcast and a re record retained on the council website for up to two years. By participating in this meeting, you are consenting for your name, the content of what you say, and your image to be broadcast and stored to the council website. If any member, officer, or member of the public addressing the committee has concerns with this, please contact committee services officer immediately. For those at home viewing the webcast, I would like to inform you that if you look above the video, you will see a resources tab. Select this and a link to the agenda will appear on the right hand side. This will allow you to open the agenda in PDF form and follow the discussion and debate. Uh, agenda item two, apologies, I haven't received any. And number three, members code of conduct. So I'll ask any member here to consider whether, that, whether they have any disclosable pecuniary interests and or any other relevant interest in connection with any items on the agenda. If so, if so can you declare them and state the nature of the interest? No, okay. So item four, we have no public questions, uh, no statements or petitions received, and no questions from members received. So we'll go straight to item five, which is Ed Central CIC Director of Appointments, and Vicky, you're going to present this report. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, members, this report um, is in relation to Ed Central. Um, the shareholder board is responsible for reviewing um, matters um, within the um, shareholder agreement and um, in this particular instance, um, Ed Central, which as you are aware is a company that is wholly owned equally by Wirral and Cheshire West and Chester Council, are asking us to approve the appointment of two new directors. Joanne Beer, who became a non-executive director uh, in February of 2019, has retired as the director of the company uh, with effect from the 12th of October of this year, uh, and the company has sought consent to appoint a replacement for her. Uh, Ed Central is also seeking consent to appoint a new and additional director uh, with specialist insight and knowledge of the special school sector uh, to add breadth of experience and expertise to the, to the board. Um, so the shareholder board today is being asked to um, approve the appointment of Alison Ashley and Sharon Sen as directors uh, to the board of Ed Central. Thank you, Vicky. Do I have any questions or comments? No? Okay. Um, just yeah. very quick. Um, one of these is an officer. It's, a, it's an officer replacement, isn't it? So it's a Cheshire West office. So it's their place, if you, if you like. Um, <clears throat> given the split nature we've discovered as this went on. So the other person, um, forgive me, if, but, but the other person, their, their background. So... Um, are they already? Are they a former head teacher? Was it in Cheshire? Do, what do we? It, it, sa it says that there would be a um, should be, should, three non-exec directors who shall be heads or deputy heads employed as such. Then one non-exec director, governor of a school located in the area. So, are these Cheshire kind of Cheshire West nominees, or are they open nominees? Do you, do you see what I mean? We, we did have discussions with them about <clears throat> their funding and where their risks came from. And their risks primarily, as I recall, came from a lot of the um, residential stuff that they do. And Cheshire West, of course, were very keen to protect that risk. And I'm, I just wanted to make sure the balance of the directors was such that Wirral's primary interests are being taken into account as well. Thank you, Councillor Green. Um, James Backhouse, the Assistant Director for Education of Wirral, is, is on the board. Um, and I understand that Cheshire West Director of Children's Services, Helen Brackenbury, is, is also um, on the board. Um, and these two new directors, I think their expertise and experience is, um, is outlined in the, in the resumes of their um, experience. Um, I think it's um, Alison Ashley who is the um, former or the head teacher of a special school. Um, so I, I think with her addition it does take the number of um, head teachers um, over the, the num generally there would be three head teachers um, on the board. I think this does take it to four um, but I think that as I say it is, it is 
specifically because the, the company wanted to um, recruit somebody with expertise in that particular area. Um, I don't object to help the experience. That's got to be a good thing. It was more the geographical balance. Um, so are they part of the rural, rural educational scene or are they part of the Cheshire West educational scene? So is there a is there a, a good balance of understanding of how the various authorities operate or is it being tilted one way or the other? That's, I think that's my point. So I can see what these people are, but what does that mean for the overall balance on the board, really? I think, um, Councillor Green, certainly Alison Ashley appears to be a head teacher from the Cheshire area. As I understand it at the moment, there are representatives from the primary sector on the board. One is Wirral, one is Cheshire West and Chester. Um, and the secondary representative, I think, is from Wirral. Um, so I think we now have four, and it's in effect two and two. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to propose that we accept the recommendations. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you. We'll move on to agenda item six, which is essential request for funding. And Pete, you're going to talk us through the reports. Thanks, Chair. So as you're aware, there's been sort of Quite, quite extensive um, discussions between, between the partners uh, to do with Ed Central. Um, the COVID situation has, has created difficulty for the company in terms of income raising. Um, losses for, for, for last year, 2021, £1.5 million. And the kind of current forecast is another £1.5 million. So, I'm okay, making it £3 million in, in, in terms of losses. Um, we've been discussing the company about how we can kind of support the company going forward. Uh, and a proposal has been put forward to uh, provide a COVID grant of 643,000 and a balance of, of a loan of 857,000 uh, 807,000 pounds. The COVID grant is based upon what the company would have got if it had been uh, on the full counter control under the sales fees and charges compensation scheme. Um, and the 857 is, is, is the balance. Um, we need to be, obviously th there is a risk of any loan, so we need to make sure um, that the company is in a position to be able to repay, repay the loan. So there's been quite a big dis discussion negotiation with the company. Uh, in our discussions with the company as well, we've obviously got our own um, red line, so to speak, in terms of things like paying the real living wage. Um, and we've kind of negotiated the company a, a way forward in terms, in terms of being able to sort of um, give the company enough headroom to, uh, to, to repay the loan back. So the proposal is a 15-year 15, 15 loan, 2%. Um, there's an interest-free period. Sorry, there's a there's, there's a period of uh, two, three years when when there's no principal repaid. Uh, it, it's just backdated to interlinked years of the loan to give them a bit more headroom, um, and that's that, that's that's the proposal. Um, we've looked, so. Thanks, Pete. Jeff. Yeah, and again, as uh, Peter's identified, there's been lots of discussion about this, <clears throat> and I do remember when the, the first ask. Um, even Cher was horrified at the amount they were originally asking for, because um, it, it seemed to be a lot more than this. I've always thought that they should have been treated in the same way as councillors were being treated. This is passporting, in effect, money that's come from government for grants and so on and for COVID, and, and making that equitable, it seems right to me. The issue, I suppose, is the loan. Um, I, or an investment, it will no doubt appear as on the balance sheet, I would imagine. Um, I suppose my question would be, or my the point I would make, is have, a bit like the government um, or the Treasury are saying to us, um, prove to us that you need the capitalisation, the loan, um, and if you don't need as much of it, as we don't think you need as much of it as you've asked for, we'll reduce it. Yeah, broadly speaking, is what they've said to us, isn't it? So, do we have any mechanism like that put in place for this loan to uh, to Ed Central? So it's not as though they could say, oh, "Oh, here we go into the back pocket. We've got this coming." Actually, if it turns out through our work with them, they don't appear to need that amount of loan then we will only give them what we think they need. Do, do, do you see what I mean? So, that, so and is that, built, is that mechanism built in? Or is it uh, simply, you know, 
643, and by the way, you've got this revolving credit of 857,000. Just before you come in on that, I suppose an addition to that would be, is there a facility for them to repay earlier if they get into a position where they can? Yeah, Chair, I mean, we've got to negotiate the exact terms of the loan, so that can certainly be built, built, built in. Um, as you say, the, 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 the figures were, 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 were sort of higher at the beginning of the process. I think at, at one stage it, it was getting towards the four million stage, so there was, there was an improvement. And it could be that in, the, in this current year, rather than being one and a half million pounds lost, the figures, the figures are better. So we do need to kind of bring that into account, and that needs to be brought into, into any, any agreements. Um, and obviously, the other thing is, there is a cost to the company in, ter in terms of repaying the, in, in, repaying the loan and sort of um, bearing interest. So it's in their interest not to sort of maximise the loan, but we need to put steps in place to, to review, the, review the amounts and obviously get their accounts and make sure that they are only drawing down what they Absolutely. So that's helpful. That would be great if you did, and the repayment early, if possible, would be good. Just as a bit of a thing, um, uh, it probably says here, and I haven't spotted it, but are Wirral and Cheshire West paying the same? And therefore, um, whatever we build in, if we're getting a repayment, that needs to be equitable too. So they can't decide to say, oh, we'll play Cheshire West first, uh, and leave Wirral because they've given us this revolving credit. Do you know what I mean? So we need to make sure that there's, you know, that's equitable to the ratepayers or the council taxpayers of Wirral as much as anywhere else, really. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a straight 50 50 deal. And obviously, like with the, with the coin cash flow range, I means cash flow is drawn down in equal installments and payback in, in equal installments. So the same process will work for the, for the, for the loan. And obviously, we'll, we'll need a, a grant agreement to, um, agreed between Cheshire West and ourselves to be signed by the company. Thanks, Peace. Yvonne, did you want to come in? So, I mean, in reality, what, what, this, um, what this company are going to get is three million in total between the two. So, we're saying they've had a one and a half million pound loss, but they want three million. Um, so that's one question. Why, why such a large amount? I mean, three million is a lot of money to borrow. But also, um, in terms of the grant, I get how it's been worked out in terms of what we would have got on the, the sales fees and charges. But what if they'd been a private business? How much would they have got in COVID grants? Would they have got more? So, Chair, I mean, I think, I think they've, they've been able to, for example, pull down from like, like Fairlow grant, so or Fairlow support, um, th those, kind of, th those kind of grants. They've had some, I think they've had sort of the ability to defer VAT, although that's not necessarily a grant, that's more a cash flow because the VAT has to be repaid. But they've, they've tried to basically pull in um, government support where they can as a, as a company. So, um, and just in terms of the three million, um, the three million comprises the loss from 2021, which is one and a half million. And there's a projected loss in the current year of one and a half million. So that, that's where the where the three million comes from. Um, but the second one and a half million, obviously, this year that could change depending if if, if things reopen earlier, if if if, if um, schools start to book the residential places, etc. So that that is subject to, to some kind of change. So how much COVID funding have they had? If they've had the furlough. Have they had the other supports, you know, the grants that we were giving out to businesses? Have they had those? Have they had them from us? Have they had them from Cheshire West? How much money have they had in COVID funding one way or another? Yeah, I'd have to check on that, I'm afraid. I don't think I've got the exact figures for those. And they've used furlough, for example, um, and I've received grants. That information is to be, you can circulate that information uh, after this, okay. Okay, well, I'm going to propose that we accept the recommendation. Do I have a seconder? That's a happy second that. Okay. Yeah. Can yeah. we agree on that then? Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay, so I'm just going to move to exempt information and so... Just, um, just a quickie, Jeanette. I'm presuming this has to be reported to PNR in terms of the decision that's made or 
I'm looking at Vicky, I suppose. Or does it just happen? Councillor Green, that's, that's what the recommendation right. is that you're recommending to P&R. Brilliant, so that's what you've thank just you. Agreed. Yeah, so it's recommended, not reported. Yeah, okay, cool. And kind of like the decision here, I suppose, is to recommend it. It's not a decision itself, but it kind of is. So that will go, do we know when that will be going to P&R? Is it to the next P&R, is it? Yeah, on, this, on the next P&R. Okay. Yeah, so the Well, it's like most things that get referred to PNR, isn't it? That they get referred, but invariably open up a whole new debate. But they do, and that's our recommendation from this board. Anyway, okay. So I'm going to move on to exempt information now. This is the exclusion of press and public. So the following items contain exempt exempt information. Um, recommendation that under section 100A, 4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the public be excluded from the meeting during consideration of the following items of business on the grounds that they involve the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined by the relevant paragraphs of part 1, schedule 12A as amended to the Act. The public interest test has been applied and favours the exclusion. So it is the essential request for funding exempt appendices, so obviously that needed to be exempted in case anyone wants to discuss it, but I don't think they do. Underwhelmed by your response there. <laughs> I mean, from what I can see, having read through this, it, it doesn't give me the information. 